latest there, Vicky Young, our chief political correspondent. And we can speak now to the virologist, Dr. Mohamed Munir, who joins us as well. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. Um, just from what you've seen and heard of the government's battle plan, as they call it, um, does it make sense to you? Um, I think uh, preparedness is really key to tackle such type of contagion. And based on the action plan that had been proposed today morning, I think that is really uh, a balance uh, between um, uh, proposing a, a, a plan, but at the same time really uh, uh, making the public aware that the government is fully prepared to uh, put all those uh, uh, acts in the same basket in case we need, really need to take it. But one thing that is very clear, that these actions will only be put in place when the worst case scenario appear. These are not something that we straight away would be able to apply. Another thing that would probably be important to consider is that um, the safety of the public health, which has, hasn't been really um, discussed in a greater detail, because if we look into the um, uh, public health uh, uh, sector back in China, in this epicenter of the, the infection, more than 1,000 people uh, from the medical uh, perspective, they were infected and 4.8% were succumbed to the infection. So that would be one of the elements that need to be considered um, in the near future as the situation arises. Do you think at the moment the UK is doing quite a good job in containing the virus? Or, or uh, I mean, I suppose as a second question to that, do you expect the number of cases, as we've heard, possibly to rise significantly in the coming weeks? Well, if we really look onto the history of this virus, within two months it has taken over the whole globe. And uh, based on the mathematical modeling and the epidemiological prediction, the virus has not reached to its peak yet. This means that the virus would have a lot more consequences um, in, in, in the whole world if the control measures that are being put in place wouldn't be sufficient or would be leaky in case that the infected people would be escaped from the detection system or from the quarantine and they intermingle with the community. That is where the major threat that is, they would be the spreader to the, in fact, to, to the rest of the community. OK, it hasn't reached its peak yet, you say, but what, when might it reach its peak, do you think, based on everything you've, you've, you've read about it? The, the, the based on the um, scientific uh, predictions, it hasn't reached to the peak, and the way it is spreading at the moment, it is pretty hard to calculate when exactly it's going to reach to its peak, and all is really down to the global uh, uh, efforts to contain the infection. So, as I said, any leakiness into the um, uh, into the containment policy that would let the virus to uh, spread at a broader scale. That is where the peak would, would start to reach, and that would be the point when we really have to act um, in, in a consolidated way uh, globally to really contain the infection. And, and, and just speaking of containing it, let's just talk about some of the measures that have been suggested uh, that people take. Obviously, washing hands, very important, but also a little bit of confusion about shaking hands. The prime minister was say, saying he still shakes people's hands um, even when he's been to hospitals and so on. That's, that's not a problem. Um, what would your advice on that be? Well, the important thing is really to understand how the virus uh, spreads. It spreads through contaminated hands if someone has touched to contaminated surfaces or has sneezed in his hand. So shaking had hands is one of the way the virus spreads, uh, but that is not the only way virus spreads. At this moment, since we don't have a, a very high level of um, uh, threat to the individual person, but is quite concerning at the community level, so shaking hand at this moment is not really a major concern. However, uh, close contact is something that we have to definitely avoid at this stage. And just one other um, question that, again, people are a little confused about, face masks. I've heard people say, actually, they're pretty much ineffective. What, what's your view on that? Based on the scientific evidences, uh, face masks uh, does not provide uh, a good protection against any of the infection, and especially when it comes to respiratory infection like COVID-19. So therefore, face masks are not really a solution to protect the infection, uh, to, to protect the infection in the society. So therefore, my simple advice would be don't wear the face mask because it gives false illusion to the general public. That's very clear. Many thanks indeed for your time. Thank you, Dr. Mohamed Munir, a virologist at Lancaster University. Thank you. Well, you're watching Afternoon Live. These are our latest headlines.